Good evening, this is Business Today. It's the 10th of February and a very warm welcome to you. So we're bringing you business personalities, we're bringing you stock market updates as well as local and global stock market updates along with business stories. So join us as we take a look at some of the top stories making headlines across the globe. Let me give you a heads up on what we're going to talk about on today's show. show we're going to talk about the Humbum Port having a high potential to boost tourism sectors, says a captain of a visiting cruise ship. Then we have stock market updates talking about the ASPI closing down 0.45% just today. And to sum up with international stories, the Japanese stock market falls 5% on negative interest rates. Meanwhile, the global growth rate has been projected negative once again. So those are some of the top stories across our business stories. First, we take a look at the personality on today's show. We'd like to talk about something that is going to keep you safe and something that you're really worried about when it comes to quality. We're going to talk about Lanka Harness, who is a manufacturer that impacts sensor switches for seat belts, airbags for world renowned automobile brands. It adheres to very strictly quality standard where the defect tolerance rate is just one for every million pieces produced. And the company boasts an annual turnover of about 25 million US dollars and it is a great outsourcing solutions provider for automobile component manufacturers worldwide. So we have the Executive Chairman of Lanka Harness Private Limited, Mr. Rohan Pallewatta joining us today. A very good evening to you. Good evening. So we are going to talk about a very crucial point, safety at the end of the day. When, when you're talking about electricity, safety and lots of other things, we need to talk about, we need to stress on the importance of it. Let's talk a little bit about Lanka Harness and what sort of products they offer. Well, uh, the core products of my company is the impact sensor for the airbag and uh, the seat belt switch and also we do a product what is called the Sunwise Ram. So these are the three products. And uh, the uniqueness of the business that I'm in is, as you rightly said, it's quality requirement of the product, which is called one ppm quality. One part per million is a defect tolerance rate. That is the highest level of quality anywhere in the world. So this is the kind of uh, device that would recognize the impact and give the signal to the airbag to pop out. And as we know, this is a device that cannot fail because it's a life and death situation. So we have uh, established the fact that it is possible to be done here in Sri Lanka. Right, so that is who you are and what you produce. Let's trace your historical journey and how you got here right now. Well, uh, I studied at St. Anthony's College, Kandy. And during my school days, I received a cultural exchange program scholarship to Japan. And it was uh, the structure of the scholarship that I visit all the big conglomerates in Japan. You name it, Toyota, Honda, Mitsubishi, Canon Corporation, Matsushita Denki, which is known as National Panasonic in this part of the world. And the present business idea was conceived in my mind when I visited Toyota. Uh, the person who was explaining the process to me took me in a battery-operated silent car. And uh, as we proceeded, I hardly saw many people. So out of inquisitiveness, I wanted to know if it was a holiday at Toyota. He said, no, it is not a holiday. We have automated most of our systems. Having said that, we proceeded further. And I could see uh, in a room, there, there were about 400 people cramped in doing something swiftly. So I was, uh, my next question was, what are they doing? So the answer that I got was that they were doing an impact sensor or, or rather a safety device for luxury vehicles. So my simple question was, although I was just 16 at that time, why aren't you automating this process? Then the answer was that it is not a process that, uh, that was, it was a process that was labor intensive and it was, it was a process that cannot be automated. That is when I first conceived my idea and then at the end of my two, I, uh, to cut it short, I, I will say it this way, I requested a few samples but I did not think that Toyota would oblige anyone with samples, but may maybe for two reasons. Because I was just 16 and I was on a study tour. And also uh, the structure of the scholarship was such, I was an invitee of the Japanese government. Maybe for these two reasons, they obliged we me with samples. And I came back with these samples to Sri Lanka and then reverse engineered. And then it took almost 15 years to convince that this could be done here in Sri Lanka. 
Right, so that is who you are and how you got there. Let's talk about location. Where are you based right now? Lanka Harness Private Limited. Uh, we are based in uh, Biagama, uh, Free Trade Zone. And how yeah. long have you been there for? We started our operations in 2002. Right, okay. So there we go. That is a bit of a company profile just to start things off with. Like we said, we are primarily focusing on safety and how do we guarantee safety? It is of course by guaranteeing good quality products. So we want to emphasize a little bit about the quality and the effort you put in to ensure that you have the highest of qualities produced in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, one way is that through compulsion because the equation is such either we maintain this quality or we perish. So we have to maintain, we have to have a foolproof system. Of course there are quality checks done uh, in process, then there is intermediate uh, quality checking, then there is final quality checking, then there is random quality checking. Uh, because as I said, we have to have a foolproof system, because the equation is you either maintain that quality or you walk out of your business. Right, so we're just running through some visuals we have regarding testing of seat belts and airbags. Uh, while that is shown, let's run through some of the international customers who are your customers, proud customer base. Well, the end users, I can, I can say, uh, in Japan, almost all the brands, you name it, Toyota, Honda, Mitsubishi, Mazda, and the list goes on. Then in Europe, Volvo, Saab, BMW, Aston Martin. Then in uh, USA, General Motors, Ford, Chrysler. So all the big names are using the product that I manufacture right here in Sri Lanka. Well, some big names. Yeah. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit about the business model you follow. If you're catering to some serious names, some serious brands, you need yeah. to guarantee the safety, guarantee the product, of course, guarantee the delivery. In this climate where everything is changing politically, environmentally, economically, you need to make sure you have a sustainable business growth model. What sort of a business model do you follow? Well, uh, this, uh, if I quote Peter Drucker, he said uh, a business model is a presumption of what brings money to the company. So what brings money to my company is uh, the quality that I maintain. So most of the questions my answer would be quality because my business strategy is quality. Because if I do not maintain, uh, I, I will be out of business. And as to why I do not have many competitors, because many people cannot maintain sustain this quality so the answer to your question the business model is based on quality right and in terms of the relationship the employer has with the employee what sort of relationship is that you have do you believe in closely examining them do you think they should be monitored very closely do you think they're independent enough to maintain their own daily it is my experience that in order to achieve this level of quality the employee should be independent because even when they put up the factory at Biagama the uh, architects they wanted to know if they could fix uh, CCTV cameras around my uh, cam uh, CCTV cameras on the production floor and have monitors around my table I declined because I believe the moment you fix a, a camera behind a human being you encroach a human dignity and then they start working for the wrong reason I do not think that people should work because they are being supervised they should work because they take pride in what they do in order to achieve the quality that I have achieved, that mentality is very important. So if, if they work for the reason that they are being supervised, it will be almost impossible to achieve one PPM quality. Now moving a little bit away from your firm, from your particular company, well the Sri Lanka Development, the Export Development Board, the SLEDB, commonly known as the EDB, that's Export Development Board, is the premier state organization for promotion and development of exports which you are part of, which Lanka Harness Private Limited is part of. So we're talking about your experience with the EDB here now. What do you have to say about the types of goods and services that Sri Lanka exports? And secondly, do you think that we need to focus more on exporting value-added goods? Well, firstly, I think uh, Professor Ricardo Hausman, who was here for the Sri Lankan Economic Forum, uh, he, in fact, uh, in his presentation, he come out, came out with two interesting slides. That is, he came out with uh, using different colors on a slide. Uh, showing us the export basket of Sri Lanka in 1994 and then subsequently he showed another slide export bas basket of Sri Lanka in 2014 the colors looked almost identical similar so which means our export basket has not changed from 1994 up to 2014 for two decades so whereas he showed the example of other countries like Thailand and Malaysia 
the colors that they had in 1994 were topsy turvy when it came to 2014 so therefore we should uh, concentrate more on what we are good at we should look at our strengths and develop products on based on that because now right now what we are doing is uh, products based on simple technologies where anyone could do so as houseman professor houseman rightly said we should it is time that we deliberate as to how what our strengths are and that we deviate from the traditions we have already already been having for a long time well the type of goods that you produce and in turn you export along with the fact that the rupee has been depreciating in terms of international currency has exacerbated this whole balance of trade issue what are your comments about sri lanka's balance of trade position well i can comment ab about uh, my company i can say because i receive in foreign currency japanese yen dollars uh, so when and i do all the local payments in rupees so when i convert it into rupees i get more rupees and uh, i can sustain myself so personally it is good for me all right so sri lanka by no means is an isolated country we need to work in collaboration with lots of other multinationals lots of other different countries and agreements how do you think international factors affect business in sri lanka we talk about international changes in politics changes in oil prices lots of different changes in, in the international arena how does that affect your business well i think not only my business any business would be affected by uh, global conditions because the factors of production as you said if you take one what you mentioned oil prices the factors of uh, production would change drastically depending on the oil prices so that has an impact definitely world conditions will have an impact but only thing is uh, you cannot say that the world con conditions are such that we cannot compete no because in when you have a business of your own you are your own master and you have to face these crunch situations at times and you have to uh, innovate special ways as to how you face this crunch situation because even in a uh, by cycle race you know when when the plane is there everyone is equal but when the steep climb comes you know leader emerges so that is how in even in business it is the case Well, when conversation with the executive chairman of Lanka Harness Private Limited, I'd like to turn towards you now and talk about some of the competitors that you face. It could be regionally, our immediate competitors in terms of the business you're in. Well, I can uh, probably say that I'm on a virtually blue ocean uh, in the region because I'm supplying India, I'm supplying China, and Malaysia, Indonesia, all 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 the countries in the region. And uh, the reason the ent entry barrier for others has been, as I mentioned, the quality requirement. Uh, they can maybe achieve once but to sustain is sustain this quality is not easy and also once you establish your credentials with these uh, automobile uh, manufacturers they will not want to take a risk and go to a new uh, manufacturer so they will always try to be with the manufacturer that they have always been with so once you establish your credentials uh, it's smooth sailing right okay so i'd like to talk about some of the market trends that you have picked up over the past quarter well uh, this is specific to me actually uh, there has been a recall of vehicles in us market it's about 38 uh, million vehicles alone uh, because of a defective airbag and almost the entire replacement order has come to my company so there is a uh, i have to double my capacity so i have uh, in fact uh, started the second factory at piagama and also we are starting a factory in mexico Right. Okay. So some cool things we can look out for in the projects. Apart from that, what are some of the other interesting projects we can look out for in the near future? Well, we as I told you, one of the products that we are doing is the Sunvisor arm. Right now we are supplying it to Honda only. So we are trying to embark uh, on other automobile makers as well with this product. Well, in the industry that you are so dominant in, we understand that you are the market leader, but it's of course always needed to make sure that your changing always in terms of r&d in terms of innovation that you're always adapting to the required place yes. how do you manage this change in lifestyles and change in technology yes innovative innovation is in an organization is no more a choice it is sine qua non it is a indispensable indispensable thing so even in my case technology can always intervene and put me out of business tomorrow so what am i doing about it I have already spoken to some people at uh, Slintech and uh, I have 
you know, we had discussions to replace the function of the airbag with some nanotechnology solution. It is not easy, it's just in the air. But then, if there is a, because now, now this technology has been there for the past 40 years, so, but that does not guarantee that it is not, it is not going to be changed tomorrow. So, if we can come out with a solution which is more effective and cost effective, then of course we can, I can, I can suggest to the buyers that are buying this product from me, look here, I have a better solution. And if that happens, we are awaiting to open a gold mine. Right. So talk about gold mines, I want to talk a little bit about the opportunities that Sri Lanka can offer in terms of labor force, in terms of raw material, in terms of the pricing, price competitiveness. What sort of opportunities and challenges do you think Sri Lanka has? Well, uh, taking my own organization as an example, we have achieved the Sri Lankan labors. It's not foreigners who are coming and working in my factory. It is our own Sri Lankan brothers and sisters that are working here. So they have proved themselves that they can achieve this level of quality. And they learn very fast. Because for example, uh, just to train a person for a Juki machine in a garment factory, in Bangladesh it takes six months. But in Sri Lanka it's just three weeks. So we cannot have a blanket view of the labor in the world. Because Sri Lankan labor is intelligent labor. So that is the differentiation. Right. So another passport that has taken the world around is sustainability. How does this green revolution impact you and the business you are in? I think green revolution impacts all of us. Uh, we cannot uh, isolate our, ourselves because we all have to live in this planet. All these discussions, all this business, everything happens uh, in this blue planet. So some of the materials that we use we have gone completely green. For example, the solder that we use, that is lead-free right now. And uh, most of the products that we use are environmentally friendly. And actually, the uh, footprint, carbon footprint that we leave, I mean, we d there are no emissions whatsoever in the product that we do. Right, so great stories coming from you. I, I wanna talk a little bit about how your own experiences have made you stronger. I read about this whole incident about how Tokyo, a uh, Toyota rather, uh, rejected some of your proposals many times, not once, but many times. How has rejection impacted you and influenced you and motivated you in turn? Well, reject rejection has been part and parcel of my life. And, uh, but the point is that every time I fell, I managed to get up and uh, they kept on rejecting and uh, I had to you know once I conceived this business idea it took almost 15 years for me to convince automobile giant uh, that I could do this product here in Sri Lanka because when the idea was conceived in my mind and when I communicated I was told this particular device we will never ever impart to any other country because of its quality requirement and with, because the function is so bonded with the brand name and therefore they will not impart to any other country. And they told me that the turnover of Toyota equals to about GDP of, of about 60 countries put together. And then they, show, they told me why should we talk business uh, with a country like Sri Lanka. So that was at the beginning. So but then here I am and uh, so the rejection I should I have to say that uh, uh, I have been uh, managed to persevere in this and uh, there is no success that runs in a straight line. It's always ups and downs. You take the ECG for example, you know ups and downs are very good. Because ECG, if it is a straight line, you are no more. That's right. So it shows that you're alive, isn't it? Very much. Right. And also just to conclude things, I want to remind a quote from Lenin all the way from Russia. He says, one step backwards, two steps forward. That is all about revolution, making a change in the lifestyle you are in right now. So we'd like to thank you very much for being with us this evening. This is Mr. Rohan Palewata, the Executive Chairman of Lanka Harness Private Limited. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you very much. Thank you.